So the next piece that I'm going to share, um, there's a war on our youth, particularly like our youth of color right now, um, that I think just needs to be addressed. And uh, like uh, my introduction said, my medium is poetry, so I'm going to address it in this next one. We are standing on Ninth Street and Fourth Avenue. I am looking at hair the color of a golden fool and eyes, eyes as blue as a perfect day. And they ask me, hey, Teray, why do you always wear those long sleeves and ties on the hottest summer nights? See, the underpass is crying of speeding cars and a violinist fighting his sleep in one homeless man that's begging. I deserve to see tomorrow too, and I believe him. So I give him change, knowing that it's not the kind of change that him or I are begging for. See, we fight the same fight. All right. When I'm standing next to my lover and they ask me what part of Africa do I call home, I want to remind them of African Americans in our continent. How it rests at the bottom of the ocean, fleshless slaves with decayed weight still hugging their ankles. Lifeless bodies still finding ways to dance through the currents of the sea and they tell me, Tere, you are afraid of your own country. And it's true. I am afraid of the ocean because I'm afraid of the things that it has seen. As I'm reading this poem, my boy is still trying to make bail because he was caught speeding down Speedway Boulevard. As I'm reading this poem, a child was killed while carrying Skittles and iced tea. As I'm reading this poem, Marissa Alexander has to turn over a two-decade sentence just for shooting a warning sign at her aggressor. And when that fear was faced at the chest of a child and the trigger was pulled, we set the man free. As I'm reading this poem, Jordan Davis is dead tonight. A biracial boy is serving a lesser sentence after admitting he was the one that killed the man because he was bored. See, as I'm reading this poem, a two-year-old was shot in the face at a basketball court. And then there's my brother. There's my brother who, after playing the marimbas for Barack Obama, would trade his three-piece suit for a backwards hat and chain at the end of the night. And all I got to offer all of his fear is just a few poems. See, my grandfather told me that the house Negro turned into a well-dressed black man in a suit, so look good. Keep your eyes straight and learn how to play. This pen has just become my strengths. See, I am standing on 9th Street and 4th Avenue, looking at a man whose hair is the color of a golden fool and the eyes, eyes are as blue as a perfect day. And they ask, hey, Tere. Why do you always wear those long sleeves and ties on the hottest summer nights? I'm dressed to impress the bullet in the shaking hand. 